Lagos, good afternoon. I'm Sandra Ezekwasili and these are your hard facts. There is life after COVID-19 and Ruti Akeredolu has that testimony. He just won the Ondo State Guba primary yesterday and that's just, that's just a, a few weeks after testing positive and recovering and testing negative again. That primary took place yesterday. There was almost uh, uh, 3,000 delegates at the primary plus security personnel plus supporters. Not exactly social distancing and avoiding crowds, is it? And you know me, I keep asking, are political gatherings essential? Because remember, Keredolu went to Abuja to pick his form, right? Just before testing positive. Now, another gathering. <laughs> anyway, thanks for gathering at your radios for hard facts. All 630,000 of you. I'm going to start today with the big three as always. Let's talk about the NDDC hearings at the Green Chamber yesterday. Ponday fainting at Babio implicating reps and the ICPC declaring one of them wanted. And then let's talk about exam malpractices. The cable just published an undercover investigation into a secondary school that helps students cheat. And then we're going to talk about politicians in AKT caught on video swearing oaths of loyalty to Ayodele Fayoshe. Now, remember, you can talk to us, of course, on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM. You can also share your thoughts on the different subject areas via Facebook. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. We're bringing you community you report as always today. And on the big hard fact, let's talk about Wayek. There's a lot of back and forth over whether the, the WASC exam should hold, whether it will hold. There's a lot of back and forth about that particular subject area. And since the federal government wants it postponed, there's even more conversation about it. So we're talking, we're, we're going to talk uh, the facts with uh, an education consultant who understands the issues. Now, you get news updates at the top of every hour. You need to listen to every minute of the show so that you can play just a minute when the time comes and win yourself 10,000 naira. After the news at 6, we have conversations with, uh, Ruf no, today's Tuesday, so we have sports. We have sports coming up after the news at 6 today. But let's get started with the big three. This is the big three. The big three. On the hard facts. On 99.3, Nigeria Info. Lagos, don't forget that we're streaming this conversation on Facebook and on YouTube, Nigeria Info 99.3. Why has exam malpractice become a part of life? Should the House of Reps answer Ababio's allegation? And would you swear an oath of loyalty to a politician? Would you do it? Those are your big three. Let's talk. Let's talk about exam malpractice. That's our first story. The Cable, the online news site, did an undercover report into YEC exams at a school here in Lagos last year. And according to The Cable, there was systemic cheating organized by the school authorities involving teachers, admin staff, students, security guards and YEC invigilators. I'm not going to say the school's name because if I do, a lot of you that are listening will rush there to go and register so that you will pass Wayek. But I'll tell you what the report says was happening there. It's a very interesting piece of journalism. One of the reporters pretended to be a 25-year-old businesswoman who wanted to go back to school. So she enrolled at the school to write her SSCE. And they assured her that she would pass because they would provide the answers for her in the exam hall. She paid them for that service. And on the exam day, uh, on the exam days, she watched the school, the school staff give money to the invigilators and the invigilators let them distribute photocopied answers to the students. That report goes into a lot of detail about how the malpractice worked. They even talked about how the security guards stopped a second team of YEC officials from entering the school during the exam. It was all very organized. I was reading this article and I was like, hey, now, wow, gang, 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 gang. But you know what? None of it is surprising. 
mean, let's tell the truth. This is not the first time that you've heard about exam malpractice during work. This is not the, sem- the first time we've heard about special centers. You've heard about it. You've seen it. You've been a part of it. It's become a routine part of education in Nigeria. It's so routine and so normal that the security guard is saying things like, ah, it's God that helped me stop those who are in Vigilators. So, ah, God just gave me the wisdom to do it. So he's doing it and he doesn't see anything wrong. I quoted the security guard, by the way, in the report. Say, ah, God helped me. By God's grace, I was able to stop the, the in- tough invigilators from coming inside. And then you have one of them whose name is Antifumi. Antifumi says, ah, God gave me wisdom to act sharp and just collect that expo where I give her. Otherwise, this invigilator for just see him and she for cast all of us. I will beat that girl and God help us. And then uh, you also have um, somebody who's sharing a testimonial. Like, it's so normal. Someone shared a testimonial on the, face, uh, on the Facebook page of this particular school. This particular student, I'm going to read what she wrote exactly as she wrote it with all the grammatical errors. Let me read what she wrote as testimonial. You know how when you buy something, you leave a review? She left this review. This school is the only solution for all the people in the nation that see education as the pro- problem of our nation. Like me now, have lost hope about all this education stuff. Have been doing YEC GCE NECO for almost good five years. But I thank God today because have make my results Math B3, Phys B3, Chem B3, Eng C5, Biology C6. The school is too much. And one thing is that some people didn't know that we used our money to buy ourselves good things. Love this school once again. End of quote. One student said that on Facebook about the school in, in the report that the cable did. We need to talk about the whys. Why are so many students? Why are so many guardians? Why are so many teachers? Why are so many invigilators willing to take part, willing to pay for Expo. For students, a big reason is is failure, repeated failure for some students. But it makes me ask why so many students are unable to pass the exams without malpractice. Is it a failing of the teachers and the schools or is it a failing of the students or is it a failing of both the, t- the teachers, the schools and the students? Because this thing, it happened. So you don't need to call me and say, oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's bad. Oh, <laughs> yes, we agree. It's terrible. It's bad. It shouldn't be happening. But it happen. On the part of the students, the problem is they don't want to fail. So why are so many of them failing? Why are so many of them unable to pass the exam without malpractice? Whose fault is it? The fault of the teachers, the fault of the school, or the fault of the students, or the fault of all of them? And speaking of schools, why are so many schools and teachers willing to take money to do this? Why are they willing to take money to help students cheat? Is it the money itself? Is it because maybe teachers' salaries are low? Like, what's the reason there? Then how about the schools themselves? This school is a big school. I don't want to say the name because I don't want to um, be an accessory to your malpractice behavior. Because I know you're going to look for the school and, and go and roll there and do it. But, like, this particular school is a huge school with branches all over Lagos. And they were doing this thing. So is it about, is it because they want to maintain a high pass rate? Like, what is it? Why do the schools do it? Why are so many schools and so many teachers willing to take money to help the students cheat? Eventually, we're going to talk about Akbabio, and we're going to talk about NDDC, and we're going to talk about Fire Share. You're going to call me and say, these politicians, these... <laughs> but these teachers, these parents, these children, they're you and me. They're not politicians. They're regular citizens. What they're doing is also corruption. And there they start. From there, you move to NDDC. 
I don't have the answers. I really want to hear from you. What are the reasons that malpractice is so rampant? What's in it for the schools? What's in it for the WIAC officials? What's in it for the teachers? What's your own experience with malpractice? What do you think needs to happen to end malpractice? I was reading that um, uh, one of the teachers that they interviewed was talking about how he also went to that school and that school is the reason he got he scored 200 in jam. That um, it's just that now this computer-based jam has come and destroyed everything. So is that the future? Should we move WIAC to computer-based uh, uh, testing? Do you think that will bring an end to exam malpractice? Because like, now what thing will they do? Now normal something. What thing I won't know now why? What thing be the reasons? 0700-993-993-993. 0700-993-993-993. You can also send us a WhatsApp message. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. And yes, tweet at us at Nigeria Info FM. At Nigeria Info FM. Facebook is uh, Nigeria Info 99.3. We're streaming live. I'm going to be showing you the uh, footage of um, the NDDC uh, acting MD fainting. I'll also show you footage of Ab Ab Abio, uh, you know, alleging that um, assembly members chop money too. I'll also show you footage of Fayoshe uh, making uh, Ekiti and members of the PDP swear an oath to him. These videos will come up during the second and third story. So today's a good day to watch us on Facebook and YouTube. Olulade, hello. Yeah. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm well. Yes. The topic you have raised this afternoon is very, very germane. Hmm. And um, I want to give you an example. One of my children was in private school. Okay. And when she's finished... Oh, no. I hate it when that happens. Hate, hate, hate. 99.3. Hello. Hello. How are you, sir? What's your name? Uh, this is uh, Chief. Good to have you on the show. Thank you, Sandra. Mm. I have just listened to what you said about the Zamma practice. Yes. Why do you think it's so rampant? I think uh, it's a... Uh, outflow of the problem we have in a nation of corruption. Many proprietors and teachers see their school as their own as rock. Okay. And as such, the students are where they make their own money. Hmm. Just as I said, the only solution is the way jump went. If there's a way why it will go on uh, electronics, I think it can be reduced to a very various minimum. Okay, all right. Use a computer and fight it to the barest minimum, he says. Well, thank you for calling to say that. Because, I mean, you have somebody who is praising God uh, that she was able to get C5 in, in Eng. That's how she spelled it, Eng, E-N-G, on Facebook. And I'm reading that message with all the grammatical errors and the zero punctuation. And I say to myself, is it any wonder that people often say of graduates of today, you are unemployable? Because you're all buying your WIAC. You're all paying for your WIAC. Oh, by the way, even in that school, they also do, like, if you miss uh, your paper, don't worry, someone will come and sit and write it for you. A school, so organized exam practice with collaboration uh, from the school, from the principals, from the invigilators themselves, gate man that believes that God gave him the morale to do it. <laughs> Austin is in Lekki. Hello, Austin. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Austin, what do we do uh, so about this problem? It's a problem. We all agree it's a problem. What do we no, do about it? It's a problem. Mm. Uh, I want to use an analogy to explain it. Okay. You know, when a human being, as a human being, if, you're, if a human being is sick in the head, mm. you hope part of the body is affected, mm. which means even your hand, you use it to go. Like, if a madman can use his hand to do any rubbish thing, pick anything. He can walk into any place that he's not supposed to walk into because the head is not functioning. Mm. Automatically, every other place will, fun will, will also malfunction. This. So I'm just trying to say the previous person has even answered your question. Mm. He, because once 
our people begin to see that the head also is not working well. Automatically, every other aspect of the, of the country will, will misbehave. Those lecturers who are doing that, they see what our politicians are, are taking from the economy, from our post of the national, our national post. Hmm. So it's only normal for them to do what they are doing. There's a way a president will act. There's a way the National Assembly will act. The body language will tell everybody to sit up. Hmm. Just the way I use an example, I'm not just using that like it's the best example. I'm just saying during the lockdown in Lagos, you saw the way with, uh, people were still breaking the rules, people mm-hmm. were moving and all that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Check what happened in Port Harcourt. Because of the body language of the governor, everybody had to sit up, even though you're a military person. Everybody sat up. So it's just automatic. Automatical. That it's very automatic rather that if our those in the helm of affairs in this nation hmm. we act right, automatically everybody will adjust. That's just it. You can see the provision for um like yesterday I was listening in hmm. this uh this stuff. Mm-hmm. Somebody was supposed to uh, well, the company is into making of chairs. Mm-hmm. They gave them two hundred and sixty something million to go and do a training for COVID, for COVID-19 training, hmm. whereas they are into furniture. Hmm. Can you imagine? So those people ended up giving another person the contract, and what they even gave them was not 260. So you're saying this is a problem of the head is rotting, the rest of that the fish cannot be yes. good. Thanks for calling me, Austin. Oluladeh has called us back. Hello, Oluladeh. Thanks for calling back. Yes, Sandra. Good afternoon. I'm calling back. Yes, I know. Go ahead. Yes. You see, the problem... Number one is the government. When government stipulates that all students must be promoted, and I'm talking for the public school now, hmm. and when you now have a principal who can stand on his or her feet, hmm. because that was the experience I had with my son. Okay. When I removed my son from the private school, mm-hmm. after his GSS3, mm-hmm. I put him in a, in a, in a public school. Mm-hmm. And I was so amazing. Mm. Are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. Go ahead. Yes, I was so amazing that when this boy was in SS1, one day he got home, I saw him reading in the midnight. And I asked, why are you reading in the midnight? Say, Daddy, we were told that if we don't have five credits, we will not be promoted to the next class. Mm. So, and I discovered that the level of his reading changes. So, one... The principal, those in charge of the schools, Mm -hmm. they have a lot of work to do. And from the findings I made, Mm -hmm. I discovered that by the time my son got to SS3, Mm -hmm. most of the pupils that refused, that did not pass, Mm -hmm. were either given notes to go and start learning something. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if you promoted everybody. Mm -hmm. And all the teachers were engaged. While he was in SS1, they had about six classrooms. Mm -hmm. I mean, six... uh, rooms and what is call it? Mm-hmm. Arms. Mm-hmm. But by the time they were in SS3, there were only about three arms. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you for free that while they were writing their wife's exam, mm-hmm. almost ninety percent of them passed the exam. So what I'm saying in essence is that when you when the government do the right thing, mm-hmm. not that just promote everybody, then everybody wants to want to make it. Then those who are in charge of those puppies, mm-hmm. they must stand their ground. So what that principal did mm-hmm. might be against what the government wants. But that woman but, but I'm not I'm not aware uh, but I'm not aware that government um has a rule that nobody should repeat. I'm I don't I've never no. heard about that. That's the policy in Lagos. You can you can you can do your research on that. The policy in Lagos, nobody should repeat? Interesting. It, okay. I'm going to look I'm look not, look I'm up that information. I will I'll look it up. Yes, I mm. I want you to look into that to that and research into it. Mm. And when you go to all these classrooms, you have over a hundred puppies in a class. Hmm. So, it's so, it's so it's so terrible. But coming to the point, mm-hmm. I think the parents have a lot of things, a lot of work to do. A child that is not that is not brilliant can also go and learn work. It's not compulsory that everybody must go to school. This is just my submission. All right. Thank you, Lula Day, for calling and making that submission. We've got uh, this person who's saying, Sandra, is malpractice only about impersonating, carrying Bob, copying, or does it also involve talking in the examination hall and asking for answers or clarifications? My guy, my guy, you use your answer that question. You just ask me now. No, just, just, just use your touch mind. Just answer what you ask me. Just, just answer by yourself. 
We've got Wale Atenoya who says, my um, cheating in final school exams or in whatever exams for that matter is a function of the collapse of us of our values. Every sector of our society suffers from the contagion, corruption of our core values. It is more rampant in public and private schools situated in rural communities. Teachers with low self-esteem indulge in the act of exam malpractices, though many who participate in the conduct may be poor financially. It is not enough a reason to engage in it. It is strictly poverty of self-value. The only way out of this mess is CBT, which will maximally reduce the plague. Sandra Gobless, Nigeria Info. Because at the end of the day, honey, if we are churning, churning out like low-grade graduates, if we keep doing that, if we keep churning out low-grade uh, graduates, we will be in a place where um, people are going to start importing people from other countries to come and work in Nigeria. Because during the time that we should ensure that our, our, our future leaders are well-equipped, we were collecting money and teaching them that you can bribe your way out of any situation. And we need to figure out a way to end it. It's 25 minutes past three. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Let me tell you about the NDDC probe drama. This is the Big Three. The Big Three. On Hard Facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. The Big Three. The Big Three. On Hard Facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. All right, Lagos, our second story is the latest from the NDDC probe drama. Yesterday, it moved to the floor of the House of Reps itself. A lot of you have seen the videos. A lot of you have heard the audio. Remember, the reps are investigating alleged corruption in the commission, right? So two major uh, stakeholders um, faced the panel yesterday with very interesting results. There was the MD, well, acting MD of the Commission's Interim Management Board, Professor Ponde. And then the Minister for Niger Delta Affairs, God's Will Babio. First of all, we're going to look at Ponde's testimony. It seemed to start out fine. He was given uh, spending during his tenure. And when they now started asking him questions, please get on our Facebook and watch for yourself what occurred. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. Our operating is the tw- As we know, ended May 31st, 2020. We are now in July. So you are not expected to be spending money from budget 2019. It has expired. From where are you going to spend this money you said here on oath that you are preparing to pay students who are on scholarship? Are you aware that every expenditure you make from 31st May till date are not are not That's right, as soon as he started getting questioned, Ponde, the interim MD, appeared to collapse. People scrambled to give him medical attention. If you are watching online right now, you're seeing uh, that some... Uh, Ponde was choking or Ponde was epileptic. 
By the way, don't ever put your fingers in the mouth of somebody you think is having a seizure. It's dangerous. But the funny thing is, after a while, one day who raises his hands to hold the guy's hands. Like, guy, come out your ass from inside my throat now. <laughs> now, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying what we saw on the video. And you can watch the video for yourself on our live stream on Facebook uh, and YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. So that was going on. And then eventually they carried him out of um, the hall, out of the assembly. Now, after they carried Ponde out of the hall, it was time for Babio to testify. Babio did not faint. He spoke. And he had some very, very interesting things to say. Koladia uh, Kinjo is my name. My question is this, Mr. Minister. From your submission, you had indicated that you are vested with the powers of Mr. President to supervise NDDC, Section 73. You, you alluded to that in your paper. And from what you also said, that uh, it appears to me that you were the one who recommended IMC, the first IMC, and you were also the one who recommended the second IMC. And I'm sure you did, you did that in pursuant to the laws establishing NDDC. How, how do you reconcile uh, someone who is a, a medical doctor to become an executive director of project in line with section 12 sub 1A that says that, says that the director shall have such qualification and experience as appropriate for a person required to perform the function of those offices under this act. It, 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 it appears to me, Mr. Minister, that an executive director of finance and administration will be an accountant. And it also appeared to me, based on precedent, that someone that's supposed to be an executive director of project, considering the terrain, the geography, and the exigency of what you refer to as forensic auditor, how do you place a medical personnel to become an executive director of project? That's number one question. The second question, yeah, I, I mentioned this because I think it's important for us to ask this kind of question. The other one, sir, Mr. Minister, is that the, the first IMC claimed that they spent eight billion. The current IMC, within the same space of time, is, a, is accredited to have spent about 81 billion under a forensic dispensation. Is it wise to continually or continually, continuous to, uh, continually spend such humongous money under a forensic dispensation? My thinking will always be that you reduce spending and then you... Control. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. Your question is very germane. First, you are asking the qualification for the office of the executive director. I, I agree with you. But that person should be somebody who is versed in, in project execution. The greatest project today in the world is medical, and that is COVID-19. Even, uh, uh, I'm, I'm coming now, and the budget of the NDDC, the budget, the, I'm, I'm, uh, my sister, please, don't be angry. Honorable Minister, was no, there COVID? Angry. Let me be, was there COVID when you were Chairman, chairman, I want, I, want, I want to be protected. No, you are protected. I want to be protected. Was there COVID when he was Sorry, appointed in protected. the first interim? Chairman, I want to be protected. Chairman, am I protected? Am I protected? Hello, Mr. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for protecting me because my sister was the EB Raw. Let me say that if you look at the year in, year out of budget of the NDDC, 60% of the budget of NDDC every year is medical. And you also have to know that malaria has killed more children in Nigeria than even accident and than any other thing. Even before the coming of the COVID, 60% of the budget of the NDDC is medical. So who will best fit the position of executive director? 
in NDC than a medical doctor to, to go and implement the 60% of the budget. I'm not the one that does the budget. You do the budget. I'll go be do your analysis I'll and you find out that the first 15% that is qualified okay. to be okay. there is a medical doctor That's because okay. of your budget. And then, That's last, okay. lastly, sir, lastly, sir, lastly, sir, the, the last question he asked was about expenditure during this period. We cannot close down Niger Delta because of the security implications of the region. Sorry, sir. We cannot close down Niger Delta Development Commission because of the fact that we are doing forensic audit. That, that the, the, region, the NDDC plays a vital role in ensuring the peace and security of the region. And 90% or more of the resources of the country on a monthly basis comes from there. If you close it down in totality, all you have will be chaos. And you have a lot of, not just militancy, but you have a lot of insurrection. So it is important that people who have gone to court, people who genuinely did jobs, should be paid for their jobs. So for me, I'm not against it because uh, uh, of course, who are even the greatest beneficiaries? It's you people now. Okay. Because if you look at your, your chairman, your chairman okay. gave... Okay, uh, 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 okay, okay. That's okay. No, can I ask you that question? That's, what is the benefit uh, that the National uh, Assembly is benefiting from? It's what okay, it's okay. Goma, Goma, are Goma. you asking me the benefit of National Assembly? Yes, Goma. you just said... I just told you that we have record to show that hmm? most of the contracts in NDDC are given out to members of National Assembly, but no, you don't know about it. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. You, it's okay. The two chairmen, the two chairmen can explain to you. That is why I was no, a member. No, 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 I was a member of the that. NDDC committee. It's I okay. Know it's okay. Wait, so, you so, were a member of the NDDC and lot of uh, wait, you were a member of the NDDC in the Eighth Assembly. Yes. And are you telling me that lots of jobs were awarded to you as a no, member? No, this is a problem. That's why I said you then must. You change. have the right to accuse people. Then why can't you bring it? Can you, bring up can you people that to me? One of the chairmen if also. If you were not awarded a contract, then why are you coming here that you are aware that you were a member of the NDDC and lots of contracts were awarded to may you? I, may you I? said I'm not. I'm not aware. I'm telling you that. I, may I inform my honourable sister that that is why we have to change. Honourable member, honourable minister, please. It's okay. That is okay. That is okay. But let me explain. No, it's okay. It's okay. Let me explain. It's okay. Now. It's okay. You must not allow the two children okay. to have the budget. It's okay. Up your mind. It's okay. Uh, she, she. Up your like, mind, honourable like, minister. Yeah, like me, I was a member like you. I did not know what was going on. Honourable minister. Yes, it's okay. Chairman, yes, chairman. So, you guys, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. It's okay. Coco. Coco, just one or two questions. Just, I have just one. Uh, um, thank you, chairman. So All right. Yeah, the legal statement that Bobby made is that National Assembly members are the biggest beneficiaries of NDTC. He said they receive most of the awarded contracts. But notice the, the reaction of the House of Reps members on the panel. Notice that only one of them challenged Takbabio for saying so. Only one, Boma Goodhead from River State. The rest of them, the, the chairman of the panel especially, it's okay. It's okay, honorable minister. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Off your mic, off your mic. And what did that Babio say to Goodhead? My honorable minister, don't worry, you're not aware. So basically, Babio was saying, Your colleagues know what I'm talking about, they don't just include you. But at no point did the other minister or other uh, members of the assembly who were there say, to the minister, you are lying. He specifically called the panel chairman. Chairman did not object. What does that say to you? I really want to know. What does this say to you? That when a minister made such a corruption allegation against the National Assembly to their faces, they did not object. They did not protest. They did not refute it. They just told him, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, off your mic, and tried to end his testimony. And yes, it is corruption, by the way. It is corruption. Government officials should not be bidding for or receiving government contracts. It's a conflict of interest. It's an abuse of power. Ababio was basically questioning the right of 
the House of Reps panel to probe corruption by calling them part of that corruption. And as if to confirm Ababio's words, while he was testifying, the ICPC declared one of the panelists wanted. That's Shehu Koko Mohammed. He's a reps member and he's a member of the panel probing the NDDC. But the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission says he's a wanted man because he failed to appear to answer charges against him. What charges? Quote, he was granted administrative bail by ICPC after he was earlier invited for questioning regarding the alleged fraudulent acquisition of properties, using his position to confer undue advantage on himself while serving as ADC to a former governor of Katsina State. Using his undue position to confer undue advantage on himself. Kind of sounds like uh, reps members using their positions to get NDDC contracts, Abi. Now, uh, Femi Bajabia Miller, he has uh, said to Babio, you have 48 hours to name the reps collecting NDDC contracts. We're going to see what, uh, what becomes of that. But I want to hear from you. 0700-993-993-993. What do you think about Ponde allegedly fainting? This morning, the NDDC released a statement saying that, oh, he's been ill for two weeks. His doctors uh, advised him not to do the hearing, but he ignored the doctors because he didn't want people to besmirch his reputation when he did not show up for the probe. And so the sickness you know, got worse that morning, and that's why he fainted at the thing. What do you think about Ababio accusing the National Assembly of receiving most of the contracts? Let's talk to William Sinico. Yes. Hello, William. I want to say congratulations to Nigerians because we have seen, our eyes have seen what have not been seen before. Mm. Now that Mr. President, because he's the one that commenced immediate investigation on this NNPC, please, I want to make Mr. President also act quickly as possible now that we see, because now the speaker now ordered Mr. Uh, ministers that he should bring the names of people that have been against these issues. Yes, because according to Akpado, he said that there is a Evident that they have the names. Let them publish according to the speaker that the uh, Bajabia Miller that said. Mm. So after then, after all this investigation, let Mr. President act quickly as the investigation has been commenced because a lot of issues that have been going on in this country, even a, a, a what they call EFCC matter, what they call a, 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 a Mago now, Mago, mm -hmm. is based now, gradually may be stripped under carpet. But I, when I look at this, because when the first starts with Kiamo, this is how it happened. Kiamu was tackling them. Why must this struggle be given to also called our representative? Eh? Who are you representing? Eh? Then you said you are, you, are, you are senator, you are rep members. At the end of the day, you are, you are dipping us into a deeply corruption in the country. What are we gaining from these people? Eh? Now that Fabio is saying, yes, it's them. Let them also be also investigated. Anybody that has been involved into this a, a, a bastard element, let them be punished. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much for calling. 99.3. Prince Wyatt, calling from Amuod. You're live on the show, sir. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Sandra. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, wow. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> ah! Before you off my mic, I have to say something. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where for my praying, God also answered the prayer. I'm telling you, the prayer of Niger Delta, the 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 the, the innocent one, the poor people of Niger, I think the answer and the, the, the prayer has been answered now. Now, as it is, I just want Mr. President mm. to compare the minister to name those who benefited from from all these uh, contracts, number one. Number two, I will still commend the Speaker of the House by giving order to the Minister to give the name of those who benefited from those contracts. And again, this is the best of a time for Mr. President to act fast, no slow motion at all at, at, at this time around. Hmm. The Dagon Makola Wali is said a lot. He has exposed this uh, interim committee. Hmm. 
and the, the forensic uh, group, it will not reveal what that going gone in the Niger data in 1999. So, if we want to get to the root of this matter, maybe that forensic in the international body to come and audit this forensic. We don't want in, anybody from that Niger data to, to, to interfere. Hmm. Because we want to get to the root of this matter. What is clean Nigeria today, Sandra? It's corruption. When we talk of no good road, education is in Sambu, no, no drug in our hospital. What we got all this problem is corruption. And who are behind it? Nigeria. We have gathered our independence. You can call the Ujibo man to come and rule Nigeria. It is we that we rule this country. When you appoint a professor to handle uh, uh, what, are, what are we talking about? Is he not qualified ac- ac- academically? He's qualified. But is corruption can reduce your professorship down to a stack illiterate. Because when you, when, when, what you're supposed to do, you don't do it at the right time. Sandra, mm. my next stage now mm. is court of law. Af- uh, because after doing, doing the investigation by the ICPC mm. or EFCC, mm-hmm. the next stage is court of law. And when my target gets to that stage, it is stuck. Because of corruption, too. When you start a case, one two year, ten year, twenty year, year, you don't know the dynamics of the case. What are you talking about? That's why I hold Nigeria, I hold Mr. President, I hold the CG to set up a department of special court that you only deal with corruption cases. Okay. A special court dealing with only corruption cases. How about oaths? Which court will deal with oaths? Let's talk about that. Huh? That's our third story. The video has popped up online and it's from Ekiti State. If you're watching on our Facebook live feed or our YouTube live feed, you will see that video for yourself. It shows various PDP members and leaders in the state and they are you know what? Let me just play that video for you. Huh? Talk, 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 and move it to you. The bag is down your chicken. Is that for me? Madam. Hello. Check my name. Hello. We know why you go for a quay. Talk, talk, and move it to you. The bag is down your chicken. Is that me? Okay. 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 On the room, each person standing up, each person pledging allegiance. For those of you who don't understand Yoruba, let me translate. Those men were swearing an oath of loyalty to Ayodele Fayoshe, the former governor of the state and a leader of the PDP in the state. An oath to be loyal to the guy. Remember last week, I told you about Joy Nunier, the former interim MD of the NEDC. I played a press conference for you and she accused God's will of Wabio, the Niger Delta Affairs Minister, of trying to make her swear an oath of secrecy and loyalty to him. So it looks like these personal oaths are very common in our politics and governance. Remember those pictures, allegedly, of Theodore Oji, allegedly half-naked and tied up allegedly at Okija Shrine right before becoming governor of Abia? Allegedly. Remember? So no be today start. Now, I'm interested in why these things happen. Why are people swearing oaths up and down? I asked a few sociologists and they said that there are two reasons. First, people don't trust the courts. So even when people have uh, a legitimate grievance or right, they are not sure that the courts will give them justice. And then the second thing that sociologists told me is that a lot of the time, these deals are not legal. I mean, you look at Nunez's allegation, for instance. She's claiming that Ababio wanted her to divert funds for him and then swear an oath so that she couldn't expose him, allegedly. You can't take such a deal to court. Court will have both of you arrested. So you swear oath. 
So oaths seem to be a tool by the powerful to protect themselves and bind people to them in exchange for opportunity. Would you swear an oath of loyalty to somebody? Honest question now. Because remember from our first story, our first story talked about regular Nigerians like you and me. It's regular Nigerians that are Wayak invigilators, regular Nigerians that are principals, regular Nigerians that are teachers, regular Nigerians are students and the parents of those students, regular people like you and me, right? Then second story went to politicians and their bruhaha. Third story is politicians and regular Nigerians swearing oaths to each other. So in all of these stories, you have regular Nigerians who rose through the ranks to hold more and more power. The teacher has power over the student. The principal has power over the teacher. Invigilator has power over the school. And it goes up and up and up. So if somebody had power over you and needed you to swear an oath of loyalty in exchange for business or in exchange for appointment or in exchange for position, would you do it? I want us to have an honest conversation. That's what we're doing these days on Hard Facts. Very honest, very realistic. No, no of the ideal situations. Would you do it? But even before you tell me if you will do it, do you even think they work? Let's even start there. Do these things work? What are the reasons you think these politicians allegedly use oaths so much? What do you think it says about our society? Let's say the person is not making you steal. The person is not making you kill or anything. They just want you to be loyal. Would you swear an oath? 0700-993-993-993. Wale is in Ijebote. Hello, Wale. Hello. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Um, let me start by this. The 48 hours given to Akpabio, hmm. I want to tell you that nothing will happen in the next 48 hours. <laughs> okay. Nothing will happen in the next 48 hours. This is not the first time we are seeing this in this country. Nothing will happen in the next 48 hours. Hmm. And that is how we are going to forget about it. The issue of EFCC, that one is gone. Forget that. And we will continue in this circle. We will continue to roll with it. If time is not taken, um, our generation will continue like this and the next generation will take it up. Because that is the level that we have gotten to in this country. Hmm. Look at the issue of the oaths you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Look at the malpractices you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mention one sector in this country that is working. In fact, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Can Nigeria work? Yes, it can. How? Please call me a little bit. How? Nigeria can work. That's the point of the conversations we have on Nigeria. Uh, how, how will it work? The, the point of the conversations <laughs> we have every day is so that you understand how things are supposed to work and then decide for yourself to make it work. Where do we take it to? To the police? To the judiciary? To the assembly? To the presidency? Mention one area that you will not find kind of worms. You just mention one area that's supposed to resolve issues. Ah, sorry about that. We've got Sunday on the line. Hello, Sunday in Lekki. Welcome. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. So I would like to talk about this as part of issue. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't know who is the person that is always... Who is the person that always says, okay, is okay. I don't know. Is he the... Is he the I've been watching the video, but I'm hardly there by the radio. So who, who, was, who is shutting Akabio down? That's true. I'm just the chairman of the people. panel was the one telling him it's okay, it's okay. So why are they shutting him down? He want, he's shut, they call him to come and speak. Now he's coming, he, he's trying to speak and they're shutting him down. Good question, Sunday. Why are they shutting him down? Bethel Okara on Facebook says, Exam malpractice has eaten deep into our education system, from primary to tertiary education level. Majority of our leaders in Nigeria, in one way or the other, pass their exam through exam malpractice. Parents, teachers, school owners, exam invigilators all work together for this to happen. Uh, Emmanuel Ocon says, Sandra, this starts with government ignoring all these small kiosks around in the name of schools with funny inscriptions like make six credit and above and score 280 in jam guaranteed. You see inscriptions like government and Wayek approved in a shanty. Please, Sandra, what do you think will be going on there? 
That's why you see average Nigerian graduates unemployable. President Sandra, it's okay. It's okay. Off your mark. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got Joel Onyebule on Facebook. Apa, we have just exposed the system of our government. Imagine what will happen if this matter is buried, as is the case of the EFCC chairman. It's okay. It's okay. Well, that matter hasn't been buried, actually. I don't know why we're saying it's been buried. It hasn't been. That matter is still ongoing. And um, the more we know about that particular situation, we're going to share that information with you on twitter we have a few comments as well uh, southeast mafia says malpractice will not end in nigeria because most examiners are corrupt unhappy parents will quickly change their kids to a different school if their children fail the school is making sure their school receives high academic praises and to make the parents happy huge digital marketing on twitter says can you now understand why the senate were against kayamo Nigerians, it's time to change the constitution. But um, the Senate is actually in an emergency meeting over that employment. That's seven seven four thousand employment. So um, we don't we don't know what's going to come of that really. Uh, Mr. Lee, you can see the panel was begging the honourable minister when he wanted to spill the beans. The entire House of Reps is already compromised. The whole process is a hoax. At the end, all will be settled and nobody will be punished. Uh, Uday Victor says, Sandra, one of the best ways to stop malpractice, especially in Wayek, is to stop, stop the private schools and federal government schools from inflating the prices of the scratch card. I registered my Wayek and Nickel with just 9,005 in 2007, which was the exact amount of the scratch card. But there was exam malpractice in 2007. So what has the price of the thing got to do with the thing? If you know what I mean. On WhatsApp, Keno says, Sandra, it's the fault of the teachers. I went to a public school and my physics teacher, Mr. Jagundina, said we must pass his, his subject. So he tried his best for us before the exams. He would give us lessons after, our, after school hours. He tried his best for us. And 90% of us were fit for his subject at Wayak. So he tried his best for us before the exam, not during the exam. Interesting. President Sandra, I bet you Nigeria cannot get better again in an entire life. I disagree. Miss Sandra, I love the question you asked earlier. And I quote, Sandra, can Nigeria work? Your answer was an emphatic, an emphatic yes. In as much as I admire your optimism, your optimism, but let's be truthful to ourselves. You and I know that it's only when these recycled politicians leave that this country will actually work. I rest my case. That's actually not true. If we continue the system to stay as is, even when these crop of politicians leave, Shebi is these same people that did exam malpractice that will replace them. If you're teaching children as a parent, as a, as a teacher, as a guardian, as a principal, as an invigilator, you're teaching children that it's okay to cut corners. People who cut corners are rewarded. It's okay to, you can get away with these things. If they are learning that, because children don't learn by what you tell them. They learn by what you show them. And what we're showing them with these exam malpractice situation is that corruption is the way to go. Because let me tell you, it is corruption. What's happening in schools is corruption. So by the time these old people go, maybe these new children are the ones that will rise up and come and replace them. If we do not have a systemic change in the way we do things, we're going to be here for a long, long time. But can we change the way we do things? I absolutely believe so. Let's bring you Community You Report on Hard Facts. I'm Sandra Ezekwasele. Hard, hard Facts will be right back.